What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason, Joe, and Crams are here. It's a big week this week, hitting one of the bigger artists with one of the bigger discographies that we've got left. Uh, doing the kinks this week, 24 studio albums. Big, big, big British band from the 60s into the 70s and beyond. This is a band that I knew a lot of the albums. Um, I would say almost all of them. I think maybe like the last three or so I was not familiar with and had never heard. Um, Own a couple of them. My dad had a couple of the later 70s ones on vinyl. And then I had a little phase uh, a number of years ago where I got into a lot of the 70s stuff uh, pretty heavily. So uh, I'm ready. I'm excited. There is a lot to talk about, a lot of different eras and a lot of different potential lists that one person could have. So I'm interested to see how you guys are feeling about all of the different eras of the band. How much did you guys know going into the week? I knew I not much. I It's weird. I uh, had two of them on my album of the year list in the 60s. I had Face to Face and uh, Village Green. And then I sort of just like stopped listening to their albums after that i don't know why i guess i always had the assumption that they're like a purely 60s band until this week when you know or past month whatever however long we've been listening to the, the kinks now that they just kept going i mean forever they just never stopped and it's it's weird it was, it was a weird week um to hear like their progression and everything so i, I was a 60s kinks guy and then like Father Christmas and, and Come Dancing. But I had no idea they went all the way into the 90s. No clue. Uh, I am with Joe where I pretty much like I knew that they existed beyond Lola is kind of where I'm cutting off. I'm pretty sure I knew most everything album wise for Lola. And then knew some hits after that. Good collection of songs after that. I didn't really know they were like this band with like three eras of identities. Like you have the old 60s pop rock kind of stuff. Then you've got like their weird theatrical vaudevillian phase, which I had no idea existed. And kind of wish it didn't, but we'll get into that shortly. And then like their more arena rock phase where they were like just a little more straight up, just like rock and roll. And then the 80s was like a little bit more, you know, 80s like pop rocky. So I didn't really know they had that in them. I thought it was just kind of like, yeah, after the 70s, they just kind of sucked. But it's going to be, uh, you know, obviously we're going to get a lot of criticism because the kinks are incredibly beloved, especially across the sea. And I will say this, even though I'm going to start off with some very low scores at first, I think even the bad albums or the albums I don't care for much still have a few good songs on them. Like they have just an incredible array of really good songs. It goes on for days. So I was very happy with this. Let's get into it. All right. We are ranking 24 studio records. We are counting Percy, which is a soundtrack. We're going to try to plow through some of these weaker records. The ones we have ranked lower kind of quick. Uh, we'll do a couple at a time, probably do a bottom four and then five at a time until we get to our top 10. Um, who wants to start? I'll go first. I don't think I've ever heard either of you talk about the kinks before, which is odd. I don't think they were ever brought up in songs or albums of the year. I think I had Lola in song of the year, but I might okay. be mistaken about that. Possibly. Possibly. For a band of their import, they did not get mentioned much like on this channel at all. So we're here to rectify that. Uh, at the bottom for me, I have the worst of their theatrical phase from 1975 i got soap opera and this one just doesn't work at all for me <laughs> yeah it's you know i don't mind the the theatrical vaudeville stuff but soap opera that he just goes too far into like worrying about the story with all like the talking and the back and forth and the annoying like narration it just completely loses the plot. Um, it's just boring and irritating. And, you know, just not a good album in any way. It was the only one that I thought was legitimately just like really bad. So get that one out of the way. I have it at two stars. 
it stinks. It might even be lower than that. I I think I listened to every single album like two, three times, except for that one. I couldn't even. I, ugh. It sucks. Uh, number 23. I'm going to go with UK Jive. Uh, this was from 89. And this one, I, I feel like it just has the least amount of like kinksness to it. Like it, it just really feels like a late 80s sort of pop rock production. Uh, the production itself is super dated, super late 80s sounding, uh, especially the first couple tracks. Like you, you couldn't really tell uh, it's the kinks at all. And then it gets a little bit better, but for the most part, um, just it's uninteresting and doesn't have any of that like kinks DNA that I'm looking for. Don't like entertainment at all. It's, you know, uninspired shot at the media, but it's just too loud and shouty. And it's just all cliches. Like at this point, they're just spouting cliches over and over uh, on this album. So did not like that one. I have that one at two and a half stars, but it's, I mean, it's, it's quite a lot higher than soap opera. That's how much I hate soap opera. Number 22, I'm going to go with Percy, the soundtrack. And there's just not enough here uh, to really interest me. There's a couple of decent songs. I don't even know if I wrote down what they were because it doesn't really matter. And, I, you know, what's the point of having like an instrumental version of Lola? Like, just that, that just screams like we don't have any songs to put here. So here's Lola, instrumental. Two and a half stars. It just doesn't have anything that you know worth even checking out. And number twenty one, I got phobia, which I don't know if that's controversial or not. I don't think so. These these later period albums, I don't know. I just don't know why they really kept going and never like developed a, another style. Like they just really seemed like they were stuck in like whatever everyone else was doing. And and this kind of feels like the 80s still. It's 93 for Phobia. Um, and the band still sounds surprisingly good. Like Davies' voice never goes bad. Like it's still pretty much easily recognizable. It's still full of like little nuances and his sort of unique way of singing and phrasing and everything. But I don't know. They're just not doing anything really worth talking about in any way. I mean, it's it's admirable that they're still around 30 years later, but the music is bland, kind of hard rock. Um, and, and that's it. There's 70, it's like 70 minutes long. And there's maybe three songs that are worth listening to. Don't Phobia, Over the Edge, really the only ones that uh, caught my ear. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's three stars, I guess. It's it's not bad. It just seems pointless. And especially in a, a discography this diverse and interesting, it just doesn't bring much to the table. I'll go next. Uh, Jason seems like he's going to have the most interesting take since he seems to be a fan of soap opera for some God knows reason. Um, my 24, my least favorite is actually Think Visual. And I just hated the 80s cheesiness of this. And I'm actually going 1.5 here. I thought it was awful. And I, it's going to seem weird because there's some 80s stuff that I have really high. And I think this one just super lame. It sounds like it's like Air Supply or Loverboy. There's like just a lot of sap to it. And there's like some sort of like Heartland wannabe blue collar stuff with like Tom Petty or Springsteen. And it does a little bit of like Dire Straits kind of feel at times. And man, I just... I really hated it. So that's going to be at my bottom. Next, I've got Soap Opera. I've got it at two stars. I don't think it's truly dreadful because I think it has a couple of nice moments. Like, I think there's some killer guitar on Everybody's a Star. But I think Davies isn't being, like, quite himself. He's kind of stuck somewhere between wanting to be Bowie and wanting to be Lou Reed. I hated Ordinary People. Not the film. Beautiful film. Um, but I hate the 50s-ness of it. I hate the backing vocals. This is just like totally the opposite of what you want the best of the kinks to be. It's just so off course. I couldn't take it at all. I've got Soap Opera number 23, two stars. My next one, number 22, I think you guys will have 
quite high because it's 70s. Um, I've got Schoolboys in Disgrace. Considerably better than Soap Opera, but I still don't like it very much. I think it's pretty lousy. Lots of 50s and doo-wop and kind of milkshake romance type songs. Jack the Idiot Dunce is way lame. It's really cheesy and campy. It has some like arena rock flourishes in it. Education kind of reminded me of like Randy Newman a little bit. I just don't think it has like kind of like the the quirky oddball slyness that I want from Davies. It's a little too on the nose. Um, I'd probably say I'm in Disgrace is the most tolerable songs on it. But for a band that just puts out and chugs out great songs usually all the time, this one doesn't have many. And then at um, 21, I've got UK Jive. I'm with Joe here. I don't think it's that great. Two stars. I do like Aggravation quite a bit. It's a little bit all over the place, but it has some great bass and I kind of like it. Um, but songs like How Do I Get Too Close, Way Too Sappy. It's just some mixed bags of like songs that are too much over the top. And there is some cool stuff. I like the title track, but overall, just like their other 80s albums have like a really cool, distinct 80s sound, but you can still tell it's the kinks. This one, I don't really think you can really tell that much on uk jive it doesn't seem like them they're not putting their spin on the genre and almost just seems like a flat stock genre album of like what this sort of music was in 86 or whenever it came out so i wasn't that impressed two stars uk jive all right well this is this is the interesting thing about the kinks because i think you can put a lot of records high or low and find people to agree with you um so We'll see how this shakes out. My number 24 is State of Confusion. To me, it's their worst sounding record. The drums sound a little better than they do on the previous record, but the guitar tones on this record suck. I think the mix on it is really weird at times. I hate the vocal sound on Labor of Love. Most of the songs don't do anything for me. There's a period where I really like Dave Davies as a singer, but by this point, he sounds like garbage on the Bernadette, just terrible, terrible vocals. Like Cram said, though, even their bad records have great songs and Come Dancing is a total banger. It sounds totally different than the rest of the record. It's like someone different mixed it, even though I couldn't find any evidence of that. It seems like it was just, you know, somehow ended up sounding different than all the other tracks. It's so catchy. Um, such a good hook on it. Uh, really love that one. But that is really the only thing this record is worth. So two and a half stars for that. Uh, number 23, we're already bumping up to three stars. So I like pretty much all of these. Uh, give the people what they want. So early 80s is my least favorite era for this band. I just think these records don't sound very good. They add Ian Gibbons on keys for this record. Just, uh, I don't know, don't like the sound of it. The drum sounds here are, are pretty bad. Destroyer's great. Better Things, I think, is even better. Those are e easily my favorite tracks. The rest of the record, I think, is pretty forgettable. And Art Lover is easily the worst song in their catalog. Super cringy lyrics. Uh, so three stars for that. Uh, number 22, uh, at least something we're all in agreement on. I've got U UK Jive. Uh, three years between Think Visual and this, the largest gap to date for them which is pretty impressive. They cranked them out for a long time. I think the opener aggravation is actually maybe the worst song on it. Pretty lousy way to start. Uh, the second track, How Do I Get Close, I think gets things on track a little bit. Definitely has like late 80s production where they like pretend to strip things down and, and act like it's a raw sounding rock record, but it really just sounds like a band in an empty warehouse. There's just like so much reverb and it's very cavernous sounding. But I'll still take this over the sound of the wimpy early 80s records. I like Now and Then. I like What Are they? Uh, what are We Doing, War Is Over, Down All the Days, Looney Balloon. I think there's actually a bunch of decent songs. Not top shelf kinks at all, but I think enjoyable. Uh, but Dave's Dear Margaret at the end sucks. Really horrible, terrible vocals, overly loud, obnoxious guitar tone, washed out reverb sound, just really bad. Number 21... Did we all have this one as well? Phobia, I've got uh, from 1993. The worst thing about it is the length. 71 minutes, 16 tracks. Almost all 16 of them are like a minute or two too long. They all have like an extra chorus at the end or, or like a long jam section that goes on way too long or too long of a fade out. Just really frustrating how long it is because otherwise I don't think it's terrible. Um, I also think it's kind of frustrating that the two best songs are the last two songs. 
in a 16 song track list to put the two best tracks buried like that takes so long to get to them. But Dave Davies close to the wire, I think is really cool. It's got like this Knopfler S guitar riff and a really great chorus with this fantastic hook, and nice harmonies. And then Ray Davies scattered the very closing track really strong. Um, at least nice to see the kinks go out on top on a high note with a, with a really strong closing track to their final record, but overall not the best of records. Three stars for that one. Okie dokie. That's, that's pretty interesting list so far. Definitely not with Jason on a couple of those, but number 20, we'll do five. Now 20 is going to be give the people what they want. I am with him on this one. Uh, this one just feels a little weaker. I don't know what it is. Maybe it is the production, like Jason was saying. That's just not nearly as good. Sounds a little light on everything. I don't know. I, I just didn't like any of these songs. I don't like Destroyer at all. I hate reusing um, their previous songs, All Day and All the Night and Lola. I think it's dumb. I hate when bands do that. And I don't think the song's very good, even without it uh art lover yeah that's a that's a weird one to say the least the lyrics are just a little too close to pedophilia pedophilia for my comfort i don't know maybe I, i'm not even gonna get into why he, he wrote that one uh he's not like advocating for it but it's like into the mind of a, a creepo and I don't know, it just doesn't do much for me uh killer's eyes has you know some big poppy like staccato bass lines and there's like a little touch of new wave and um some hard rock and arena rock and sort of what they were messing with on uh, sleepwalker and you know misfits but i don't know I, I don't think they really have a good direction here and the songs just don't connect uh but three stars for that one number 19 i'm going back to the debut um three stars again for kinks self-titled i do love lead off track the cover of beautiful delilah by chuck berry there's so much attitude uh great almost like punk song you got some mystifying which is pretty satisfying you know proto garage rock a little harder edge than typical uh mercy beat stuff uh too many r&b covers though as was usually the problem in these early days of rock and roll but you do have You Really Got Me, which is, you know, what, the first hard rock song ever. Um, so that's pretty cool. And, um, you know, just a classic riff, classic guitar tone from Dave Davies. Really great. And Stop Your Sobbing at the end there is pretty cool, but it's better by The Pretenders. And uh, it, I, it's okay. It's three stars. It's It's nothing special, though, other than the uh you know you really got me they should have included all day and all the night on there that would have been nice to have like another big tune number 18 i'm gonna go with think visual and just you know mid 80s it's 86 now they don't really know what they're doing and there's some interesting stuff kind of buried in here uh welcome to sleazy town it's pretty cool. It's a pretty good riff. Nice chorus. Uh, Lost and Found, though, is like a little too close to soft rock. And the best song probably is The Video Shop. Got some classic like British horns. I think some French horns in there and stuff. Pretty catchy song construction. Um, and then like you get those synths that kind of come in and ruin it. Like those really 80s sounding soft rock synths uh, that I just do not care for. and kind of all over this album so uh three stars i mean it's, it's not terrible none of these albums really are terrible at all uh past soap opera i was kind of kind of impressed at how listenable most of these are they're just not that interesting but not terrible uh number 17 i got low budget from 1979 uh comes in after they kind of re found their sound with uh sleepwalker and misfits going to a little bit of that arena rock a little more hard rock creeping in and with low budget they add in kind of new wave a little disco there's some definite disco-y bass lines going in uh i do like catch me now i'm falling a lot even though it just recycles the jumping jack flash riff with some 
new wave like synths and piano and and feel to it uh but it's a great riff and it's a catchy song wish i could fly like superman really got some blondie to it i uh, really love the the disco bass line would fit right on the, like parallel lines but um you know it, it's good that they found sort of that extra sound to add in to improve just the kind of standard rock and roll that they were kind of falling into a misfits there's also songs like misery which skew closer to the pub rock style of the day uh, great rockabilly style guitar solo, 50s dual vocals, honky tonk piano, a lot of fun, moving pictures, another disco y kind of track. So, uh, a little bit of new way, a little disco. I actually wish they leaned into that a little bit more, uh, maybe some more synths, uh, but uh, not bad. It's three and a half stars for low budget. And then finally, 16, I got Misfits, which starts off a little sleepy. Uh, but once you get to the really new wavy permanent waves, uh, gets a lot of fun. Live life's great. Nice new wavy guitar solo from Dave Davies. Nice upbeat tempo. And uh, the second half, I think, is much stronger than the first. Although the like coming out saga of Out of the Wardrobe, I don't know, it's sort of like Lola domesticated or something. But um, I think it it ends well with Get Up, another disco-y kind of tune. So you know they. They very, very much follow like the trends of the time, it seems. I think they, they do it all pretty well. So these are all three and a half star albums and they're all pretty good. I'm going number 20, Preservation Act, number one, two stars. I really don't care for this, this era at all. Like the rock elements or a lot of it is gone. It's overly theatrical. I think those characters and like the best thing that Davies does is coming up with these character portraits and they're just kind of goofy here too quirky pretty lame lame references to like steve mcqueen and johnny thunder nothing really shines my number 19 i've got preservation act two i do like the incorporation of some like groovier keys here a lot more theatrics uh when a solution comes isn't too bad i really like the tone of the guitar one of the biggest things that came away from me here is i think the kinks influence a lot more things than i realize and i think davies especially with his singing because i get a little of like early glam kind of crowd here with some of his vocals which i thought was really cool like i said even though these albums i don't have good scores i um kind of find things that i i like quite a bit about them um but this one yeah it's just not the style i want uh maybe when i get really into the kinks and i'm gonna re-listen to like a lot of these a lot um, maybe then I'll start to find the little things that I like about it, but for now it doesn't really do it for me. Number 18, I've got Percy. Um, and yeah, it's one of those albums we cover with these, um, artists quite a lot where it's just, they're hired to, you know, do the score to a film. And that makes a lot of the songs all over the place. But I do think there are some really nice musical moments here. Um, and there's some really good string arrangements and stuff. And, yeah, start to finish, you kind of get knocked around a little bit because all of a sudden there's strings and then a instrumental version of Lola. And, you know, like there's some like bluesier stuff. Um, but you can see the talent here. So I'm going up to 2.5 even for Percy. And my number 17 is going to be Phobia, their last album from 1993. It sounds a little 1993, but they don't go crazy with like sludge and grudge and all that. I kind of like Wall of Fire, the lead off track. It's got kind of like an early 90s grunge bar rock kind of feel, maybe like Gas Food and Lodging or a little, little Neil Young, but it's pretty much only on that song. So I was like super excited in the first song and I was like, okay, this is a pretty interesting move. Still some good songs on it. This is the best review Jason has done too far. There is a good rock album in here somewhere, but it is way too bloated, even song to song moment to moment stanza to stanza it really just needs tightened up this is like one of the best examples of just something has a lot of good elements and needs tightened up i think the informer which is a slower ballad on this album is probably my favorite song on it um and then number 16 for me i've got word of mouth and you know i think do it again is cool I don't like the way this album sounds. I think it's kind of kind of between having like more of like an 80s pop rock singer or pop rock songwriting kind of vibe, but kind of going back a little bit too much to the meat and potatoes arena rock kind of production. Like 
I really hate the way the drums sound on Do It Again. It's it's too flat or something. I like kind of the more new wave dreaminess that's on State of Confusion. And I think some of these songs are just a bit too lame by the numbers, hard rockers. I think the title track is lame. I don't find a lot too interesting. But I think Living on a Thin Line is absolutely brilliant and nothing on the album really comes close to it, even sonically. Sold Me Out doesn't do much, but I do think some of the instrumentation is good. Guilty, I like a good bit. Massive Reduction is way too lame and peppy, but I think the songwriting is pretty good for the genre they're going for. I'm just not crazy about the way it sounds, and I think there are some duds. Um, but Living on a Thin Line automatically gets it up to two stars, and I'm at 2.5 for Word of Mouth. Take it away, J -j 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 Jason. Don't know why I did that. All right. Uh, I'm going to keep talking about word of mouth. That's my number 20. Unlike Cram, I think the, the production on it is much improved over the previous two records, much uh, tougher rock sound on it. Do it again. I think it's a real solid opener. Cram's right though. Living on a thin line is excellent. Easily the best track here. Contender for maybe like my second favorite Dave Davies song. I think it's fantastic. There is still a little bit of 80s cheesiness on, on tracks like Massive Reduction, but even at its worst, I think, you know, there's a clarity to the mix not found on their other albums from earlier in the decade. And I, I think it avoids having any like really bad tracks. I think pretty much everything here is pretty decent. Um, going Solo, I think, is a, a very good closing track as well. It was used on Ray's first solo record. He actually took three songs from this record and, and put it on his first solo record. Um, but yeah, this is a decent record. Not terrible. Three stars. Uh, up from there, my number 19 is Preservation Act 2. Putting Act 2 ahead of Act 1, I think, is an interesting move by Cram. I think this one's easily weaker. Um, but also, I, I don't think it's as bad as people think it is. It's definitely flawed. It, it might be like the first of these conceptual records, going even going back to like uh, Village Green, where the concept feels like a burden on the record. Uh, it feels like they're forcing things into this narrative rather than having it just be like a natural way of presenting a set of songs. All the announcements coming in, you know, I don't object to that sort of thing in general. And the idea of using those devices isn't a, really a problem in itself. I think it helps kind of move the story along, but I think it's overdone here. Uh, just too much, too distracting after a while. Song wise, I, th I think there's some a, a decent amount of good stuff here. I, I like... Introduction to a Solution, He's Evil, When a Solution Comes, Mirror of Love, Nobody Gives, Aware Aware is Love, Artificial Man. So, you know, I, I think, you know, plenty of decent songs, but it's way too long. I think it could have been easily cut down. You could have taken out all or most of the announcements. And I think if you did that, you would get close to the quality that Act 1 is at. But here it's just a little too bloated, maybe bit off a little more than they could chew with that one. I've got that at... Three stars. My number 18 is Schoolboys in Disgrace, which is kind of like the last record of the theatrical period. Um, of course, another conceptual record. Just really just a bunch of like coming of age tracks about being a schoolboy. I think I think it tries to replicate what soap opera did much better. Uh, I'm a big fan of soap opera. You'll see that coming much later. Uh, but the songs here just aren't quite as good. I think a lot of them feel kind of tossed off, especially in the front half of the record. Jack the Idiot Dunce in the two hole just immediately takes things in the wrong direction. This kind of like Jerry Lee Lewis style 50s rocker, which can work. And I like some of their other 50s inspired stuff. But here it just feels like they're just blasting uh, through chord changes and not really even writing a song. And I'm not sure what the vocal delivery is all about on First Time We Fall in Love. It's like he's going for an Elvis or something, but it's really weird. He's like singing in this deep voice. I think side two of this record is a lot better. Um, I'm in Disgrace. I think it's pretty good. The Hard Ways, this really awesome kind of like power pop tune. Headmaster, I think, is decent. Um, but overall, I think this record feels a little rushed. I don't know why they decided to put out another record the same year as Soap Opera. They just put it out very quickly. And I think they could have, you know, spent a little more time coming up with a few more songs that were at the level of uh the hard way so to me this is it my first 3.5 but it's a very weak 3.5 uh, my number 17 is percy soundtrack to the 1971 film of the same name uh feels a little bit like kind of like yellow submarine where you've got 
some songs and then some instrumentals. At least here you have like the instrumentals are rock and not just uh, orchestral stuff. And I think some of the songs that are here are quite good. God's Children, I think is a really great song. The Way Love Used to Be is really good. Moments is good. Dreams is really good. Animals in the Zoo is pretty good. I think you've got like a really, really strong EP here. And then just kind of like a bunch of other stuff to to fill it out. Um, I've got it at three and a half. Uh, it's not great, but it does have great moments. I think it's pretty solid. My number 16 is Low Budget. They bring in Jim Rodford on bass for this one. This record to me just is like some girls, but not as good. It's just like they heard some girls and we're like, that's a way forward for us. We can be like these old guys and still make kind of cool music without pretending to be new waivers. And it just doesn't work quite as well. And it's almost like too transparent as to what they're doing. There's like three or four songs on this that feel like they are specifically trying to imitate the production of Shattered. Attitude and Pressure. Um, I think there's another one as well, but so much of this record just is trying to be that. And then on top of that, you get all these like disco bass lines, which is just like, to me, them trying to do Beast of Burden or Miss You. And the problem with that, I love some girls and if they nailed it, it would have been great. But these songs just aren't nearly as good. However, I do really love Catch Me Now I'm Falling, I think is great. Little Bit of Emotion, I think is a pretty strong ballad as well. And I like the slick funkiness of moving pictures at the end. Really cool way uh, to, to kind of close the record out. Um, but overall, the record feels a little plain, a little one dimensional. Songs just aren't good enough. I think they kind of had a decent idea with it, but didn't didn't quite execute enough. OK, well, we are just not we're all over the place. Um... So, but it's shaping up to be a very interesting top 10. Uh, number 15 for me will be a, probably my biggest controversial pick. And I don't know, this one just, I like it, but it doesn't do much for me. And I've heard a lot of people talk highly of it. You got everybody's in showbiz as my 15. And some, yeah. I mean, oh, well, we'll see. Um, I just don't like the exaggerated, like, Dixieland style they're going for the, the rootsy New Orleans stuff all the brassy horns like they're not doing like those English kind of you know springtime what, whatever you, you call I don't know how to describe the English uh, orchestral sections the Beatlesy stuff this is all like New Orleans Nolans horns and I don't know Davies is doing like almost a buffoonish type like Randy Newman, like he's trying to be like the stereotypical singer. Um, and I don't know, like the the folky observational songwriting, it gets a little too much. You know, he's talking about like potatoes and sitting in hotels and eating food and the motorways. And it's just like these minute, uh, monotonous details kind of just bore me. And the, in, the music itself doesn't really thrill me uh, much at all. Uh, a couple good good tracks though. Um, uh, Super Sonic Rocket Ships, pretty fun. Uh, sitting in my hotel is good. Any anytime uh, David is, is writing about sitting or like the sun, it's probably a good track. There's like twelve of them. Uh, so sitting in my hotel, solid. Celluloid Heroes is pretty good uh, though. I've heard, I've, I've seen a lot of people put that like as their favorite King song, which I think is. A little ridiculous. Uh, I don't. It's it's not that good. It's fine. Um, but yeah, the the concept of like touring and boredom with it, like it's boring to me. So stop singing about it. It's too indulgent. Uh, number fourteen. I got word of mouth from eighty four. Um, this is around. This may have been after him and Chrissy Hine broke up, but I definitely hear like a little Pretenders style rock in this one. It's like hopeful. Slightly anthemic. Uh, guitar is a little louder. Uh, Do It Again, I think it's a good good track, though, to kick things off. And Living on a Thin Line, great. One of Dave Davies' best songs. Got some harmonica on Good Day, very, like, pub rock style. And maybe a little bit, you know, Cars in there as well. And, um, yeah, it, it's a fun album, though. Massive Reductions is good. 
a little bit of like Gloria by Laura Branigan in there. Summer's Gone, really catchy. I think Davy's voice sounds great on this album. And everything's fun. The music's punchy. The guitars are loud. Like all the backing vocals. And uh, I, I think it's solid. It's uh, right right at the top of the, the three and a half. Could be four with another listen or two. We'll see. Uh, number 13 will be my first four-star album. I'm going to go to The Kink Controversy back 1965. They kick things off with a very poor choice um, with that cover of Milk Cow Blues. Just, you know, another, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm g- guessing it was Shel Tommy or whatever producer who was like, yeah, let's do some more R&B to kick things off. It just totally sets the album off on the wrong foot. But I think the rest of the songs, uh, lots of energy till the end of the day, sort of rehashes the all day and all the night riff. And you really got me riff, but it's a, it's a good song. And I think uh, Davies' his songwriting just keeps getting a little bit better on every album. Uh, I Am Free is really good. That's a great uh, Dave Davies. Got a little like rock, um, got a little like country rock twang to it which is uh, pretty cool. Maybe a little Birdsian. Well, I don't know if this is before. It's maybe before the birds. Around the same time as the birds. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's cool to hear that country creeping in there. And uh, just a, a solid album. Four stars. A lot of fun. That early grungy, you know, garage rock style. Number 12, I got Preservation Act 2. If you trimmed it down, I think it would be really good. Uh, introduction to a solution when a solution comes uh kick it off pretty good but then you get like the announcements and it gets a little bogged down in the middle until you get to he's evil which is fun mirror loves pretty good i like the the female like chorus backing vocals a lot and yeah it just feels too much weighed down by telling a story the first preservation act barely it's like an introduction to the characters and the story really doesn't come into things much. And it doesn't, it's not like this overarching thing where it's like hanging over everything. Here it's like, okay, I got to finish the story. I got to, you know, do the whole story here, finish the story and sort of like, you know, the the climax and the ending. And it just like feels a little rushed, which is odd for a 67 minute album. Uh, but it would have been a better idea just to like drop the concept and put a bunch of these songs strip out the announcements and maybe like i don't know if we need flash's dream and flash's confession and then you get the whole side four and it's too much uh but i still think it's fun uh, and i liked it a lot more than people think i would uh four stars for preservation act two and uh number 11 is gonna be kind of kinks so i'm getting through all the early stuff most of the later stuff uh, but I think this is a, a big time improvement over the first album in the songwriting. I know that the band themselves weren't happy with the production at all. And it feels a little sloppy, but I, I don't mind that for a, a 1965 album that's going to be kind of you know in the garage rock style. It's not supposed to be like pretty and perfect yet. I want it messy and, and dirty and grimy. Uh, Look for me, baby. Uh, got my feet on the ground. Really good charging rockers. I love Nothing Can Stop Me Worrying About That Girl. It's got that later 60s pop DNA. Uh, just like a little bit. You can peek into the mind of where Davis is going. His growth as a songwriter. Feels like very, almost like indie rock from, from way later in the 21st century. Um, a couple of needless covers. I don't think Dancing in the Street is that great. Nagging Woman, not needed. Just not needed. Drop the covers for the love of God. Uh, but I like Rasa Davies doing the backing vocals on a couple tracks. Some cool songs on here, and uh, you can just see the growth on everything. So, yeah, it's a it's a good, solid four star album from the, the salad days of rock and roll. All right, my number fifteen. I've got Sleepwalker. Uh, not my favorite album of theirs, but a pretty damn good moment for their catalog to get out of the uh, the phase they were in. Much more back to formula. The big theatrical concept albums are squished out. Songs aren't their best here, but it is a step in the right direction. Mr. Big Man has some really killer guitar and some really sweet bass on it. Some great ripping guitar on the title track as well. 
And I feel like the songs are just a nice, safe approach and the instrumentation is allowed to really flourish and take the reins a little bit. So I think it's smart to kind of get back into the groove, kind of learn how to be a rock band in the studio again, see what flushes it out. You know, nothing to me is really is that memorable. I feel like at times it's maybe a little passionless, but it's still kind of a breath of fresh air and nothing really um, that bad on it. So I've got it at 2.5 and that is my last 2.5. So I think there are 14 likable Kinks albums here. And I'm going to go with one that I'm sure you knuckleheads have at like number three because it's a country album. I've got Moswell Hillbillies. Three stars. I think it's good. Yeah, we really need to just like find a country album done by a band we've covered where you guys don't praise it because this is good, but it's not amazing. Uh, real working class American labor kind of feel to it. Uh, good bit of middle America country. Slide guitar on 20th Century Man is great. A little bit of political infusion, kind of an album of the times. I think maybe at times it's a little inauthentic and gimmicky, but it's done pretty well. And it's almost a parody of uh, what it wants to be. And maybe that's the point. Uh, but I don't get into the tunes quite as much as I want. Holiday is my least favorite song on it. Um, but I think the songwriting is here and i think it's a really interesting take on what they're trying to do just not really aesthetically what i want from the kinks but i still do like it quite a bit um yeah and i recommend it I'm giving it three stars my number 13 i'm going with give the people what they want really big power loud power to open it's got almost like a replacements kind of flair with like the hot bar rock with a little bit of punk flavor Everything's really strong on this album. Not your typical writing style of Davies. Um, but, I, you know, I, I like it, but I don't think it's quite a sweet spot. In fact, the rock and roll playing is kind of the show on here. I hate the title track. I think Killer Eyes has kind of cool air ballad vibes, getting some, or AOR ballad vibes, excuse me, getting some like super tramp feelings almost at times. Uh, I think Predictable is pretty cool. I think he's an underrated singer, and I think right now he's like really doing a lot of cool styles and stretching his voice with his characters quite well. Add it up and destroy are awesome. You know, pretty basic when it's at its worst on this album, but I actually think Art Lover is pretty interesting. It's an album of high and lows. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty good. Three stars. And then my number 12, I've got Low Budget, um, which... It's kind of the album that perplexed me the most, I would say. I didn't like it. It really jumped around because there's like this major arena rock blanket behind it. But you kind of get influences on other stuff. I think what I was trying to write down and take note of is what Jason was saying. Like, it's very like late 70s disco rock, very some girls. That was a great call. Attitude is nice and punky. Catch Me Now, I'm Falling gives me kind of that AOR super tramp feel a little bit again. And then, like, I like Pressure a good bit. It's very polished, but, like, kind of want to be gritty and dirty, but it doesn't quite get there. But I think the rhythm section is on point, especially on a song like National Health, which I think is really cool. I feel like it's kind of an album where they're just reflecting on what other kind of stuff they like at the time and putting it in their music, which is cool. I wish I could find, like, Superman. Kind of reminds me of Cheap Trick a little bit with, like, Gonna Raise Hell. There's a lot of big riffs on here, a lot of powerful guitar with like some groovy bass. Yeah, so I think it's pretty cool. Um, and then my number 11, just missing out on the top 10. I've got Kind of Kinks. Three stars. I like it. Maybe recorded a bit quick as it seems to me that it's just not quite as good as the debut, even though there's not as many covers. By no means it's bad. It's quite good. Uh, first song, Look For Me Baby, is strong. It's got that classic 60s pop rock drum part that a lot of times I find a bit annoying, but I don't hear. Uh, Nothing in the World Can Start Me Worrying About That Girl is really good. I think that may be the best song Davies has written at this point. I think the band is rocking a bit less compared to the debut. Songs are maybe a bit more soft. Drums are a bit more reined in. The party is a bit more sedated. But the songs also have like a little bit more doubt and kind of lack the rock and roll swagger that they were doing with the debut. Davies is a bit more vulnerable here. Obviously he's getting into the writing. It's not a bad thing. I think the version of dancing in the street is really lame and also kind of just as a foot in the mud for this album. Uh, Come on now is a lot of fun. Um, 
So long is very pleasant. Something better beginning is quite nice. Yeah, I think it's good. Three stars, just outside the top 10. Okay, my number 15 is a record that I was very afraid of. I heard it was bad, and it has a horrifically bad album cover. It's Think Visual from 1986, but probably my favorite batch of songs of theirs since Misfits, I would say. Uh, the production on it isn't my favorite, but it's also not terrible. But I, I think it's about as good as you could hope for a 1986 Kinks album. And I think there's some tracks here where it actually enhances the material. I think it works perfectly for a track like Lost and Found, which reminds me of like late cars or like some Rico Cassick solo stuff. I love Ray's vocals on repetition. He's doing like this Dylan impersonation a little bit when he says the word repetition repetition and he exaggerates it more and more at every chorus it's just hilarious by the end of the song natural gifts I think rules one of the best songs of the 80s of theirs um I wish I could make like a separate top 10 80s songs of the kinks because they got all these gems scattered throughout the 80s but they just can't really compete that much with the uh with the classic era uh, Killing Time, I think, is another great song. I think there's a little bit of a lull in the middle of the record, but it starts and ends really well. Um, interestingly, the two that I have written down as the weaker tracks are two that Joe pointed out as liking, which is Sleazy Town and Video Shop, which I did not like much. Um, but a lot of very good tunes here. I think there's hooks everywhere. I think it sounds really good, even if it's maybe a little overly slick. But I was pleasantly surprised by this. I had very low expectations for it, and I thought it was pretty solid. Uh, three and a half stars. At number 14, I've got Preservation Act 1, which is kind of a weird album. And then it, it feels like a clear step down from what came before. And yet a lot of the songs on it feel like these underappreciated gems. So it's kind of hard for me to place. I absolutely love the song Daylight. Uh, that main guitar part is so great. It feels like it might be in an open tuning or something, but I, I just love it. I think it sounds really good. Really cool song. Sweet Lady Genevieve is excellent, Sitting in the Midday Sun. Kind of recalls their um, mid to late 60s pop output a bit. Uh, Where Are They Now is pretty good too. Here Comes Flash, I think is kind of campy and fun. However, I think there's also a, a decent amount of like B-tier material mixed in as well. Not everything sticks, so it's kind of a mixed bag. It feels maybe worse than it actually is um, due to its attachment to Act 2. But I think it's worth a listen for sure. Three and a half stars for that one. All right. And then at number 13, 13 to 11 here, I'm going to blast through the early kink stuff. Uh, number 13, I've got Kinda Kinks. <clears throat> Still a few covers here, uh, but a lot more original material than on the debut. Tired of Waiting for You is fantastic. One of their best early tunes. I love that back and forth guitar part. He's just going between the two chords. Um, but it perfectly captures the feeling of like impatiently waiting and I think it, it contrasts beautifully with that really sweet melodic B section in the song. Nothing in the world can stop me worrying about that girl is great. Um, of course, now permanently associated with the pool scene from Rushmore. Um, there's some other decent originals too, mostly on side two. In some ways, it feels like they're improving and getting better on this record. But at the same time, it feels like a rush job. Like we've got some hits. Let's get something out fast. Let's uh, strike while the iron's hot. And I think... You can really feel that on this record. It feels like maybe they should have spent a little more time on it. I think it's the weakest of the first three, but there is definitely some great stuff on it. Uh, number 12, I've got Kink Controversy. Again, like Joe said, opening with Milk Cow Blues is not a good choice. I think some people see this as kind of like a transition towards some of their more sophisticated songwriting, but there's still a lot here that's either like bluesy or hard rock kind of garagey style. Um, but you can definitely hear a little maturation happening on songs like Ring the Bells, I Am Free, and I'm on an Island. Where Have All the Good Times Gone is a great rocker. Also, notice the backing vocals on this record getting a lot stronger and more interesting. Uh, I think there, there are signs of things changing, things evolving, but I think the end result is kind of similar to what the first two is, which for me is like some great songs, and then some more that feel a little undercooked or maybe rushed through. And I don't think there's anything as great on this record as Tired of Waiting for You or You Really Got Me. It's kind of missing like that big like standout track. 
so that's number 12. And then number 11 is the debut kinks, often labeled as proto-punk. I think it's kind of easy to see why. Definitely have a harder edge than the Beatles or, you know, the Who, who wouldn't even debut for another year. Um, the Stones, I think, had even a heavier blues fascination than they had. So they had kind of a little bit of a different thing going on. Uh, the guitar tone on You Really Got Me, totally gnarly for 1964. I think the recording sounds great for that era, too. Uh, I think it sounds better than the Stones stuff from the same year. Uh, like a lot of bands um, from this time period, there are a lot of covers on this. Lots of blues stuff. There's a Chuck Berry song. Um, the the interesting thing to me here is that how much better the originals are than the covers. Like I think clearly uh, Ray Davies is a major talent. You can tell that right away. Uh just Can't Go to Sleep and Stop Your Sobbing, I think are perfect pop songs. You Really Got Me is great rocker, kind of combining the pop sensibilities with heavier tendencies. So I think there's a lot here to like. Uh, good record. Three and a half stars for Kinks. Yes. Top 10 Kinks albums. My number 10 is going to be Schoolboys in Disgrace. Uh, I just think it's, it's fun, man. I didn't know what to expect because it really just has a terrible album cover and they, their album cover game was not, not too strong. I gotta say most of these are pretty, pretty lousy. A uh, little cartoon with the boy with his pants down. I don't know. Could have, could have picked something better than that. Uh, but I do love a bunch of these songs. I think it kicks off really good with school days. Um, you know, got that great, uh, arpeggiating piano and organ, a uh, good guitar tone, I think, from Davies. It's got a little more raunch to it, as I think Robert Chris Gow would say. Uh, it kind of kills the vibe with Jack the Idiot Dunst, though. It's a little too much uh, like corny 50s style, all the silly voices and stuff. But uh, the first time we fall in love, I think, is really great. It breaks out a high falsetto um got that big chorus of voices coming in which is pretty nice it's a, a lot of stuff going on but i think it holds up pretty well headmaster that's that like rock opera stuff um which i like it this feels sort of like you know well between this and and you know the preservation acts it's it's almost like a proto bad out of hell kind of style where it's just like made for the the stage made for musical theater i like that i can see why Cramser would not I, I can see why many people would not but i like those big heavy guitars uh, with that theatrical sound and um hard way last assembly no more looking back i think are just solid strong songs and uh you know i'm a, I'm a sucker for huge arrangements and this one has it so I, I i liked it i thought it was good four stars for schoolboys in disgrace okay i'm so at three stars to kick off my top 10 which means i think it's good everybody's in showbiz i think joe talked about it already i don't think jason has um it's one of those albums that gives you a live half disc which that half is kind of cool bit of a different sound still got some lingering effects from the vocals from hillbilly left over i think the drums are really nice on this album especially on the opener here comes another day almost sounds like he's alternating impressions of singers from the band at times here like it's still got that really rustic americana kind of feel to it uh the horns and arrangements like i think joe was talking about are a little distracting to me at times um and I kind of like the more serious and wild version of Davies. Like, I do think this one is a bit mundane. I think he's got better writing weirdly in him. And it, it comes off as a little buffoonery to me, but I do like the compositions a lot. They're just such a talent for writing good, likable songs. With the piano and everything going on, it almost has like Warren Zevon vibes to me at times here. Um, Hot Potatoes is actually one of my more favorites on this album. Uh, sitting in my hotel is my favorite. Uh, I love the horns fluttering in horns that have that English sound, like Joe was talking about. That blur would eventually use and stuff like that. Um, Motorway, I think, is good. The album grows on me as it goes on. It's the aesthetic kind of seeps into me a bit. Um, you don't know my name has some really great guitar in it. 
the guitar in general in this discography is really underrated. Like I never really thought of the Kinks as a guitar band, but so many well-written parts and some really good playing and jamming. Um, and I think the live half is pretty cool. It has a lot of their more recent stuff that's good. And I just think it's a good rock album. Um, the good live rock half album. And then a pretty interesting um, take on Americana by the Kinks in the other half. So three stars. It's good. All right. I'm at three and a half for my number 10, which is 1978's Misfits. Andy Pyle comes in as a new bass player, although there are a handful of other tracks on this record featuring other bass players. Basically, at this time, all of the non-Davies members of the band were contemplating leaving. They even had some rehearsals where they were like looking for other members to form a new band. Uh, but despite all the turmoil and the need to bring in other drummers and bassists to, to finish recording all the parts, I think it's still a pretty solid record. I think the title track is really strong. The album's biggest hit, Rock and Roll Fantasy, I think is really good. I love uh, Dave Davies' uh, Trust Your Heart, which I think is great, has some great guitar leads on it. Love the melody. I love his vocal delivery on it. I don't think it's quite as strong as the, the predecessor, Sleepwalker. I think there's a few tracks here that have kind of questionable lyrics. And Permanent Waves, that song, uh, the production on it is kind of weird. It's like different than the rest of the record. It's got like this honking, I think it's a synth that, that's sounding like horns. It's this weird honking noise that is a little distorted it's really weird and then i think the tune itself gets a lost a little bit it's a little reverb heavy a little bit murky sounding uh so uh i'm not not crazy about that song i think maybe could have been better with some different production but overall i think a solid record um enjoyed this one this is one of the ones my dad had on vinyl so i knew this one uh, a, a decent bit going into the week um three and a half stars misfits Number 10. Speaking of that, is there any correlation to Rush naming permanent waves and moving pictures out of any of this, or is it just a coincidence? I don't I don't know. That is a crazy coincidence. It's so weird. Two albums in a row. In sequential order, like as if it, like Rush listened to it last year. Like, oh, I'm permanent waves. Yeah. That is that is weird. Uh mystery. Mystery will never know. My number nine, I got State of Confusion. I think it's definitely their best 80s work. Uh, I think the songwriting is just just better. Uh, Come Dancing, obviously the big hit. It was a great song. Um, deserved to be, I believe it's their, tied for their highest charting song ever in America. So I guess the idea, the weird thing I think about the Kinks was how popular their like singles were and then they didn't sell like any records in the uk after um basically something else like just nothing like i don't even think um village green or lola even charted and that's just so weird to me and then over in america somehow they're more popular than in britain like there's such i don't know it's it's really bizarre like the whole story of them and their chart success and everything so uh they were popular in america around 1983 apparently and um it's a good album definitely maybe got some really jumpy yet heavy guitars uh title track is you know it's got some angular jumpy a uh, little like pub rock sort of stuff going on definitely with the trends of the time young conservatives nice new wavy um you know some pretenders on here definitely 1983 uh, especially on heart of gold i think it's extremely pretenders like and i don't i don't mind bernadette as far as the vocals go it sounds like robert plant sort of singing rockabilly in a, in a weird way i think it's i think it's totally fine um and you know having something like come dancing which is their strongest song in a while and you know nothing after this i don't think comes close to come dancing really helps an album like this with lots of good songs but like having that like great song right in the middle uh that and don't forget to dance is really good too so uh, a couple really strong tracks put this up to number nine and four stars for me 
Yeah, Jason's 80s goggles are just so crazy to me. Like, how State of Confusion can be the worst Kinks album when it's their best 80s album. I'm, I'm with you, Joe. I still haven't talked about it. But in my number nine, I've got Misfits 3.5, which is my very good. Um, It's getting there. I, I feel like the Davies charm has a pretty substantial return here. He's singing very sweetly at times too here. Like he's really paying attention to like his the delicacy of his voice. I think Misfits is a great song. I love the incorporation of like the big arena rock kind of synths. The songwriting prowess is just full frontal back here, especially on like the title track, like I said. Um, but I like Hay Fever. I think Live Life is a good rocker. It's got a fun chorus. I think the bass work on this album is on point. Um, crazy good. Andy Pyle, right? Um, so good. And Black Messiah is a return to form with a tune that has something to say and has some balls to it. Um, Out of the Wardrobe also brings the heat in that regard. And doing what he does best is just like writing these intriguing oddball like character portraits and stuff. Uh, I think Rock and Roll Fantasy has some really cool vibes. There's some really just good, really very good likable rock and roll moments here like in a foreign land. Trust Your Heart and Get Up are really good. I don't think there's a bad song on this album. Just good rock rock songs, nothing too crazy, finely tuned. One of their more simple albums, and it just delivers start to finish. So that's my number nine, Misfits. Really good, and we're going to keep on rolling from here, baby. All right, my number nine is a record that might be appearing too soon on my list for a lot of people, but this is where I bump up to four stars. I've got Face to Face which is the first kind of like big leap in style from them, a move away from their early hard rock and blues towards a more pop sound, no doubt influenced by the Beatles. But I think Ray Davies, you know, maintains a distinctly different songwriting voice on this. Um, You got some Baroque elements as well. Nicky Hopkins playing harpsichord and piano and melodica. You can hear him on Rosie, Won't You Please Come Home and the excellent Too Much On My Mind. Sunny Afternoon, of course, I think is a great song as well. Obviously, I prefer this style to their early stuff. This is like this Baroque 60s pop is right in my wheelhouse. But even though I think the melodies are getting a lot stronger and I think the harmonies are getting more interesting, I still don't find the songs to be as memorable as like Beatles stuff or even like the Stones in their uh, 60s kind of like psych pop era. So... It's kind of second rate to that stuff, but a second rate version of that can still be very good. So I think there's a lot of really good stuff here. I think the first half of this is is stacked. It's really strong. Then maybe about halfway through, they they break out the guitars a little bit more. Uh, for songs like House in the Country, Holiday in Waikiki, Most Exclusive Residence for Sale. And I think those tracks are a bit of a step down from what, what they had going on early in the track list. I think Fancy is maybe a little too transparent of a Beatles move. You know, the requisite Eastern influence coming in. Every band had to have one for a couple of years there. Um, so I don't know. I, I do really like this album. I think it's very good, but I don't put it on quite the same level as the best pop of the decade like some do. I think there's a pretty clear divide between... Beatles, Stones, Beach Boys, Zombies a couple years later, and this. I think it's definitely a step down, and I think it's a slight step down from the best kink stuff, too. So four stars for Face to Face. Very good. Maybe not quite as great as some think. Don't forget the Who. Don't forget the Who, baby. Jason always forgets the Who. Uh, Although I, I believe the birds were the first to do that Eastern uh asian indian kind of style not not the beatles actually the east was the first (laughs) oh very good you got me with that one uh my number eight running yeah Uh, i'm gonna go sleepwalker i mean is a a nice return to i don't know guitars i guess you know they, they dialed down the theatricality the concepts just back to basics it's it's hard rock it's almost like aor a uh, little arena rock um i don't think it's too far outside of like what bad company foreigner can't like that kind of style i think it sounds better though i think they do it a little bit better than than those bands those bands aren't 
aren't my favorite. I don't like bad company at all, as many people know. So uh, I think the Kings are doing that style a little bit better. I think they're just better songwriters. Um, Life on the Road's good. Sleepwalker, real strong. Jukebox music, really catchy. And it's just it's good, good songs. It's good, hard rocking songs. And that's really all you need. All right. My number eight, I've got the Kink Controversy. 3.5, really good. I have no problem with Milk Cow Blues. Really rocking, really riffing. I think they do this better than anyone. I think they're just a very underrated rock band. I think they were heavy. I think they were hard rock before Hendrix, before Zeppelin, before Cream, all this stuff. Ring the Bells is really cool and sweet and has just gorgeous acoustic guitar accompaniment. So they're mixing their wild rock band kind of feel with a little bit more sophistication in their writing. It's just a great love song sentiment. I Am Free is really cool, written by Dave Davies. Uh, I think you can chalk this up to the most creative thing they've done to this point by far. The songs all have their own outfit. They don't really blend together. There's lots of variety on it, really spreading their writing wings. Till the End of the Day has a really good hook on it. Like They're really underrated hook writers, especially with that guitar, man. I think there's a little bit of a trippy and experimental touch on a lot of these songs that make them quite underrated. I'm on an island is really cool. You get like the character of Davies coming in with like such quirkiness. Really cool. Uh, I love where all the good times have gone or where have all the good times gone. I always hated the Van Halen version. Um, and I like this one quite a lot. It's too late is really cool. There's a really misty, cool bluesiness to a lot of the songs. Uh, I think the last two songs are a bit of a throwaway and somewhat forgettable, but overall I think it's just really creative and, not what many people were doing. I mean, the Beatles were super creative at this point in the 60s, but the Kinks, they just had like that harder edge, that venom, that slyness with Davies coming in with his character portraits and makes it really interesting. So Kink Controversy, my number eight, 3.5. Really good. Almost great. All right, my number eight is Sleepwalker from 1977. A step out of the musical theater era into the arena rock era. Finally, not a concept record. Um, this was the last with John Dalton on bass, who waited till the last possible moment to step up. And his playing on this record is incredible, I think. I mean, he I wouldn't say he was ever bad or, or you know, he was always a good bass player during his tenure with the band, but he really shines on this. Um, especially on Mr. Big Man, hit the bass playing on that is fantastic. I also really like the sound of this record. Joe mentioned that sonically speaking, this might be my favorite sounding Kinks record. I think it is really well produced, really well mixed. Sounds great. Um, I think it's got a bunch of good songs on it too. The title track is great. Brother is excellent. I love Sleepless Night. And during this era, this late 70s period, especially this record and on Misfits, I might even prefer Dave Davies vocals to Ray. I think his voice is really cool for a couple records here, um, which wouldn't last into the eighties, but uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed the songs that he sings on this record. John Gosling adds so much to this band and he has since joining the band, but he has a huge impact on this record. I think um, I love his playing on stormy sky, which is such a killer tune. Um, it's like this little soft rock, almost like yacht rock number that just like can't contain the kinks. It just like keeps building and building uh, to this great climax. Um, I don't know. I, I think they feel a little bit liberated as a band here. They're not like having to serve a storyline anymore. And the playing is way looser, way more free than anything on Schoolboys. Um, I wouldn't say it's their best material ever, but I think they do a lot with the songs that they've got. Um, just like making everything better through their playing. Life Goes On, I think is a great closer, which has maybe some of Dave Davies' best like lead guitar work. I think the soloing on that is great. So I think it's really strong. Four stars for Sleepwalker. And one of their better album covers too. I like it a lot. Right. My number seven. Going with Preservation Act 1 from 73. And this is, you know, where they wait, they turn to the vaudeville, the excess, 
uh, the theatrical concepts. But I feel like this one isn't weighed down so much by trying to have a story to tell. Like it, it's there and it's sort of like connecting everything, but it doesn't like hang over it like it does on, on Preservation Act 2, where it's just like, okay, we got to advance the story. We got to throw in all this announcements and you know, the, the cheesy like television reporting stuff. Like none of that's here. It's just songs. And I think Sweet Lady uh, Genevieve and Sitting in the Midday Sun are pretty close to masterpieces, pretty close to what he was doing in the, in the 60s. Uh, Sweet Lady Genevieve is just so pretty. There's, I don't know, I get like some Beach Boys in There's a Change in the Weather when they like build the song around one, like a minute 30. Davy sounds a lot like Carl Wilson, I think. Like, I don't know what he's doing, but he's, he's you know, switching his voice around, which he does a lot, but he's, I don't know, channeling. What, to me, it sounds like the Beach Boys. It's really weird. Where Are They Now is really good. It's sort of like uh, Village Green. It's, you know, it's a lot about nostalgia. It's just like an extension. It's the same style that Davies is all about, that like looking back on the untouched virgin England. And I don't know, sometimes that comes a little too much because, you know, he's what, like 30 years old? Like, why is he always so nostalgic about things that have gone by? It's a little weird. Um, but, you know, um, Money and Corruption, I'm Your Man, that theatricality, some clever lines in there, uh, the female backing singers. Yeah, I, I think it all adds like a new interesting wrinkle to the sound. And uh, like I said before, Sitting in the Midday Sun is a really just sweet, loose, uh, fun throwback to that 60s sound. Um, and the slightly ragged vocals from Ray work really well there. And the, the production and the mixing by this point are really good. It sort of weighs down a little bit those green to me and like those 60s things. Like I wish they sounded better. Uh, but by the time you get here in the 70s, the production sounds great. The mixing sounds really good and everything is just really where it should be. So I think that helps uh, this one a lot. So four stars, Preservation Act 1. All right, my number seven. Very close to four stars, just 3.5. I've got Arthur, The Decline and the Fall of the British Empire. I don't know what it is that doesn't quite get it into great territory for me. I think it's just kind of maybe missing some standouts or something because they don't have a lot of critiques about it. I think the songs are meatier and longer. It has all the rich storytelling and technique you'd expect from Davies and the Kinks. Victoria is a fantastic opener. It's so much fun, but still poignant and has a lot to say. Guitar really cuts loose and sounds great on Yes Sir, No Sir. Some Mother Son is great. Uh, Drive-In is probably my least favorite on the album. It's a little annoying to me, but Brainwash is really cool. I like the melody and the party-like atmosphere of it. Kind of back to a lot of the fun they were having on the debut, I think. Not quite as raw and electric, but musically more interesting. And there's a cool jam session toward the end of Australia. This might be an album I need to give more time to to get it in that four-star range. But uh, Shamri La is great. Mr. Churchill is a little bit forgettable for me. I think maybe the problem is a lot of the songs just have a little bit of a problem where they are at these like kind of sporadic changes. And it kind of takes me out. Like I have to pay too much attention to the songs. I can't really relax and sink into them as much as I want. So that might just be something that just takes more listening because nothing to say is really good. Arthur is good. has great guitar. It's a really good rock album. It's just rocking. There's great guitar. Not like other than Victoria, some of their all-time best stuff. So I don't know. I'm kind of in between what I really want to say about this album. But for now, that's where I've got it. 3.5, maybe 4, maybe 4.5 one day. I don't know. All right. My number seven. I've got something else. And I think on this record, they found a way to take what they were doing on Face to Face and make it more uniquely their own. This one doesn't feel quite as indebted to other 60s bands. And I, I think this is kind of where the writing style of Ray Davies really comes into focus. I think, you know, where he had maybe touched on very English subjects before, this is like maybe the first one where it feels like, oh, this is his thing. Like the, this is what he is going to do. And 
Uh, there's a lot of great stuff here. David Watts is a great opener. Dave Davies' Death of a Clown is really strong. Possibly his best song to date. Afternoon Tea is really cool. I love the Bossa Nova feel of No Return. And Waterloo Sunset, just a brilliant song. One of the great songs of the era. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it as a closer. It does kind of have that closing feel to it, but at the same time, it's so good that I never want it to be, to be the last song. Like, but maybe that's, you know, keep them wanting more type of thing. But uh, it's always kind of a bummer when that song ends and and there's no more uh, record after that. Still, though, not a perfect record. I think Harry Rag and Lazy Old Son are not quite on the same level as the rest of the record. And for me, the production is just OK. I think in 67, when this comes out, recording quality is improving rapidly and I think other bands are kind of outpacing them production wise. This record still kind of sounds like it was made in 65. I think uh, the mono mix, I think definitely sounds better than the stereo mix. Um, but I think it, it could still missing something compared to um, the sound of, you know, their contemporaries at the time. So really good. A lot of really good songs. I think this is kind of where they're starting to like truly find their sound and their identity as a band but um, still got quite a handful of records I like more than it. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting choices all around again. It's probably our most diverse top tens we've ever had, at least for a classic band. My number six, I'm going to go with Muswell Hillbillies. Uh, this one's a little swampy. We've got some Roots Rock especially 20th Century Man, uh, cute schizophrenia, paranoia, blues. Uh, you hear, you know, maybe some Dylan, some the band, some Randy Newman, a lot of strong American influences, I think, coming into the music, plus a little bit of that vaudeville and blues style that they'd already dabbled in loosely a little bit. And, it's you know, it's a sort of concept album, seemingly uh, antipodal concept of English hillbillies. Uh, where Davies grew up and um, I like this album it's very clever uh, and it's another one that's you know about the tension between modern life and nostalgia and technological improvements uh, versus you know rustic old-fashioned living but as much as I like it it's still you know especially the first half I do miss some of like Davies Dave Davies uh, louder boisterous guitar it really leans into that, like, you know, folky world. And I just miss, you know, especially after Lola, like that hard rock that they, you know, kind of got into on that one again. And then we turn around and we do like a whole 180 to this. Maybe that holds it back a little in my mind. Um, but there's some great tracks on here, uh, especially when you get to the second side, have a cup of tea, Holloway Jail. It's a great country little tune. Love that combo of acoustic guitar and resonator, that rollicking piano, female backing vocals, just a really well-crafted, you know, almost country song. Um, Oklahoma USA is gorgeous, soft little ballad. You got that piano and the accordion, a uh, real down-home folksy, little sad, little melancholy in there. And, uh, you know, Uncle Son, Muscle Hillbilly, they're all strong. Great strong tunes. I uh, just the instrumentation. You know, not everyone has to do a country album, and you know, I crams are of course, <laughs> of course, had it super low. But I, I like country rock, so this doesn't you know turn me off or anything. But maybe it's just not where in their discography I wanted it to be. Like I wanted another Lola. I wanted that hard rock. So you know, they they do it well, but it's not at like the birds level or you know the band level um, but good nonetheless four stars for must well hillbillies right my number six this is where i've got state of confusion this was the biggest surprise for me um didn't really know anything about this album and i don't think they get enough credit for how they adapted it into the 80s i think this album sounds good it's kind of my ideal sound it's a little bit pristine and crystalline here uh, I think the title track leads off really good. Definite Maybe is pretty cool. It's got a nice spark to it. Uh, I think I said before in another album, but I'm getting a little bit of like replacements vibes with like that polished hard edge, but still kind of poppy bar punk rock kind of feel. 
I love the guitar heroics to open Labor of Love. Decent song. Kind of gives me like a little bit of Donny Iris vibes, a little bit of like nerdy power rock to it at times. Uh, Come Dancing, obviously you guys touched on. It's really catchy, really fun. And to me, this is like the most 80s pop album. So obviously I like it a lot. You also get, you know, other than Come uh, Dancing, you get Property, which is cool and slower, but has just great melody and hook to it. Then you get these really gleamy, starry jams, like Don't Forget to Dance, which seems like it could be right out of like a John Hughes movie. I really dig Young Conservatives. I love the commentary on it. I really like the snap on the drums. I think it's a very amusing track. Love the lyrics when he says, uh, keep your white collar clean and all that. And just think it's just great fun. Very pretenders, like Joe said. I'm surprised it didn't rip on the malls opening in Ohio and all that or whatever. I think Heart of Gold is really nice, really pretenderish kind of guitar tone there. Cliches of the World is pretty cool, great guitar. And I like sending it off with that rock is Bernadette. Just really good 80s pop rock songs. It was very close to four stars for me. That's my number six, 3.5 stars for State of Confusion. All right. My number six is The Kinks Are Village Green, Preservation Society. Uh, it's the first one produced by Ray, loose concept record inspired by Dylan Thomas under Milkwood. I swear to Christ, if you have Hillbillies at number one and Soap Opera at number two. Could, could maybe. They're really exploring nostalgia and idealized pastoral English lifestyle on this record. Opens with three excellent tracks, pic- picture book especially. Uh, that song just has such a great riff, such a great groove, super catchy chorus. Love all the backing vocals and stuff going on, which is clearly where Mac DeMarco took the melody to Salad Days from. Uh, took it right out of the backing vocals there at the end of the song. Big Sky, I think, is an incredible track. Love the spoken verses. Really big, epic sounding. Great drumming on that track. Some of uh, Mick Avery's best drumming. Very Keith Moon-esque. He's all over the place on it. Sitting by the Riverside is great. Love the piano. There's also accordion on it, which I believe is actually Mellotron, uh, which is pretty cool. The rest of the record, I think, is solid, but it does feel like the other tracks function more as album tracks. And that's not to say that they're filler. They're, they're better than filler, but they aren't quite on, on the same level as the best stuff on the record. I think if you took the five songs that I singled out and took them away from the other songs, I think suddenly the other songs don't feel quite as good. So I think it's one of those records that kind of is greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, and, you know, in one sense, that's great record making where the, the best tracks elevate the rest. And, and make a, like an album feel that's, you know, better than the songs. But I do kind of feel like that's what's happening here. I don't think every track is killer, but the best stuff is really good. I think it's another step forward from where they were before this uh, with something else. But I think they've got better. Well, the heat is off us, Joe. Yeah, I mean, we're <laughs> good. It doesn't even matter. I'm not even going to do the rest of my list here. It doesn't. It doesn't Four matter. stars, by the way. <clears throat> having soap opera above any of those things is just <clears throat> we're, get, we're gonna get killed jason will get killed um which is fine he deserves it number five for me is gonna be arthur and i i kind of feel the same way as cramser does there's something about it that i want i feel like i should like it more because I like all these songs, like they're all good. I don't think there's like a weak track on the whole album. Starts off great um, with um, Victoria, super poppy, really great chorus. The Victoria, it's great. It's, you want to sing along, and yet I don't know. It it then kind of pivots to like these anti-war critiques of yes or no, sir. The devastating some other's son, driving, which I agree with Crams is the worst track on the album. Uh, brainwashed, another sort of critique of you know English, the the crown and war and uh, upper class kind of stuff. And then Australia, you know, it's a concept. They moved to Australia, I guess. I mean, there's a theme, there's a concept here that loosely held together. It's another kind of look at. Uh, you know, British life, sort of for the middle class, low class, whatever. Singer Law is incredible. 
scrub away the kickoff side too. Mr. Churchill says gets a little monotonous towards the end, but uh, she's about a hat like Princess Marina is a good one. Young and Innocent Days. Nothing to say, are they? They're all good tracks, but there's something missing. Maybe it's the lack of like diversity among the instrumentation. It's not quite as uh, unique and, and Baroque as Village Green. And it's, you know, definitely not as hard rocking as Lola, which would come the next year. So I don't know. I didn't know. I don't think I knew a single song from this before this week. So maybe it's just unfamiliarity with it in between two albums that I did know and was really good. Um, but I don't know. The, the mixing, again, the production, not great. It's very muddled. Um and that really kind of is the only thing that holds back like their their 60s stuff for me. So I think the songwriting is great. I think Davies lyrically, uh, I don't know if he's the best of his generation, but he's certainly close to it. The way he you know, does these little vignettes and these little character sketches. Uh, so influential later on, obviously, for Brit rock and Brit pop and, and everything. And uh, I think he's very clever and funny often. And it really comes out here. And yet something only has me giving this four stars. So I got to deal with it personally. What is holding me back from liking Arthur more? Because it, I listened to it like six times and I want to love it. And I just, I don't, I don't love it. I like it. I don't love it. I, yeah, I feel your brother. All right. All right number five, something else. Four stars. I'm in great territory. Give me some credit. Discord. I have five great Kinks albums. Davey's back at it with his just brilliant, clever little portraits here. David Watts is a great opener. I feel like this album actually, for me, is a considerable step up in production and overall sonic quality from the first few. I think Death of a Clown is absolutely lovely. I think the songs are like steadier and a bit more precise. And I do get like some Beach Boys vibes here a little bit, especially like the backing vocals are coming all whimsical, very full of wonder to me. It's a bit bittersweet at times. So they've really mastered kind of creating atmosphere and feeling, which is nice. It is a bit of a drawback that the guitars give away to the keys a little bit more on this album, or actually a lot more. But it is really well done. And like there's harpsichord on two sisters, which is excellent. Uh, I love the line. She threw away her dirty dishes just to be free again. That whole segment in that song is awesome. The songs are just these lovely little observational character study journal entry kind of things. Um, and it has a really cool casualness about it. Like there's a levity in the songs, but it doesn't hit you over the head with it. They're just conveyed in such like a really just kind of folksy, neighborly kind of way, which I think is kind of the brilliance of Davies. Um not as always my most favorite musically. It has a lot of that 60s British jaunt to it. I don't always love, but it doesn't bother me nearly as much as other um, examples of that. Just like on this album, it's almost like Davey's point of view is just going to win me over no matter what the music is. And the music's still really good. Um, Situation Vacant, the guitar actually does shine on that one. And Lazy Old Sun has some really cool unexpected moments. It can get kind of wild and cool. Afternoon Tea is cool. It might be the most English song I've ever heard in my life, but that's very cool. Um, all of it is really interesting. And like pieces of Davy's mind is just all over this album. So I can tune into anything for three minutes to hear what he has to say about it and kind of flavor it up the way he does. Waterloo Sunset, I'm with Jason. I think it's a great song and I don't think it's a bad closer, but I'm not sure if it's the best pick as a closer, but I could be wrong. But my number five something else four stars it's great okay my number five still not soap opera i've got arthur which is a concept record soundtrack for a film that was never made victoria fantastic opener really rocks but it's also super catchy this record kind of deals with similar themes as village green but it's uh modeled after davy's brother-in-law who was married to his sister rosie arthur anning they moved to Australia, and I guess Ray Davies was kind of broken up about his sister leaving England. Probably a better distillation of those ideas on this record, though it might not reach quite the heights of 
of Village Green. I don't think there's a song on this as good as Big Sky or, or as good as Picture Book, but I think it's it's probably a more consistent effort. I think there's a lot of really good stuff here. Some Other Sun is great. I like Driving, Shangri-La, Young and Innocent Days, I think are all very strong. I love the guitar tone on Brainwashed, uh, the great horns on Nothing to Say, Yes, so, yes Sir, No Sir. Uh, take some really cool unexpected turns, almost feels like a little sweet how many different shifts there are near the end of that song. So I, th I think it's really good. Four stars. I, there is, I don't even want to say there's something missing because I think it's good as it is, but I don't quite get to the heights that some people do i remember when we did album of the year a lot of people had this top five and definitely remember seeing a few having it at number one of the year and what was a 69 yeah in a year like 69 i just don't see it quite at that level it's a very good record and and it probably is just a, a variety type of thing. It's a lot of sort of the same thing of Ray Davies style of writing. And I think that's the problem with a lot of this era for me in general and why I don't have Village Green or this or something else at the very, very top of my list because three albums in a row of that is a lot. All right. It's interesting. We all had Arthur Lowert's. I don't feel so alone in my opinion on that now. Uh, number four, four and three, back and forth. I couldn't really decide. They're the same rating, but uh, face to face will be my number four. I have it at four and a half stars. It was the top five for 1966. And this one just sounds better. It shows a lot of growth, I think, over King Controversy. Um, you know, the the band has something to say now. You know, Ray Davies' lyrics, they're saying things that aren't just sort of teenage blues inspired, just like, you know, pre beatles -y stuff. Now that the Beatles have kind of come along and, and shown, and, and Dylan and, and everyone else uh, who's sort of, you know, accelerated the, the artistry of rock, uh, Davies is right on board. Uh, Party Line's great. Um, more rocking than, than the other stuff. He kind of tones down the, the guitar after that, but still know how to rock on Party Line. Uh, I love the harpsichord accompaniment to Rosie, Won't You Please Come Home from Nicky Hopkins. He does a lot of great work on these early albums. Dandy shows off some of his lyrical wit uh, when he's talking about how many women is the right amount. Uh, four and you'll be dead. I think it's pretty funny. Uh, I forget what number he settles on is the correct amount, though. Um, Session Man, fun and up-tempo, Rainy Day in June. Uh, really nice, dark, moody, pastoral number. Uh, feels ahead of its time uh, with the piano-driven, um, sort of almost like proto proggy. Uh, got some like fantastical lyrics dealing with like, you know, creatures and, you know, um, like fantasy elements creeping in there, which is cool. And side two, you got a little more experimental stuff again, like uh, Kings bouncing around uh, that island feel of holiday in Waikiki. You got the Raga fancy, uh, the dark pop of Little Miss Queen of Darkness, and then you got some vaudeville and sunny afternoon and some Beatles on All Remember, and uh, just the range um, of of styles is really really cool really interesting for 66 uh, i think they're pretty much right with the rest of them I, I think they're ahead of the stones and the who at this point they're not on beatles level but uh very interesting and very unique and davy's really just coming into his own as a songwriter and lyricist right here in 1966 on face to face so Real solid album, four and a half stars, like I said. Yeah, I've got Face to Face as well as my number four. I've got it at four stars. It's great. Party line, very Beatles-y opener for me. I like it. Some risque taboo. Uh, subject matter with a sexual identity crisis. Is she a she at all? I think there's some really cool vocal harmonies here. Like Joe said, they have something to say. 
Rosie, won't you please come home? Awesome harpsichord part and just a really awesome little breakdown. They're growing musically so well here and writing really cool complex breakdowns and parts. Not just like, you know, two minute long pop rock song structure to get on the radio. The guitar part is just so alluring and dangerous sounding. So much flavor and color in their music right now. Dandy is a tremendous step in the songwriting by Davies and has a classic little, his classic little touch on it. Um, and the songwriting is just feeding off of what they did on Controversy. I really think he's finding his voice as a writer here. Too Much on My Mind is wonderful. Session Man is great. I love his like novella-esque kind of writing style and his character profiles. Um, and it's not like Ray is the only star of the show here. Like all of the instrumentation is great. Everyone has time to shine. The drums in Session Man are just phenomenal and all over the album. Uh, Rainy Day in June has an excellent soft, stormy, haunted atmosphere, so they're also getting picturesque with their stuff. It like really opens up and warms up in a really nice way. Not everything is like an amazing song, but it all kind of works with the album to just create this awesome experience. Um, I think House in the Country is a bit bland, um, but Holiday in Waikiki is a really good rocker. I think the highlights on here just show what the band are about to really be capable of it's not quite flushed out to the masterpieces that they'll come up with i like fancy a lot i love the sound of the guitar on it the eastern indian influence is very cool one of the just most underrated marriages in the history of music is british rock and you know that eastern influence kink stones zeppelin they're all doing it uh, little miss queen of darkness is fantastic the bass playing is sensational and you're looking fine is great i love the scratch in his scream just great vocal <sighs> An album just full of great performances. And then, you know, Sunny Afternoon is terrific and just has that Ray Davies classic writing style. I'll Remember is solid. It's a great album. Uh, face to Face, my number four. Let's go. All right. My number four is Soap Opera. To go breathe a sigh of relief, I don't have a number one. There's, there's no relief. <laughs> there's no relief. Uh, man, I am, I'm not surprised that people don't have this at the top as, or as high as I do, but I am surprised that people put it as low as they do. I had a blast listening to it. I think it's super fun to find out that people think this is one of the worst Kinks albums is ridiculous. Uh, I think it's really good. I love the over the topness. I love the theatricality. I'm not surprised that Cram doesn't like it. I'm a little disappointed in Joe. I think there's a glamminess to it. Um, that reminds me a little bit of like, Mott, especially the hoople it's got like that 50s sort of thing happening very campy i really like the 50s rock influences that come out on tracks like rush hour blues i think some of ray davies best vocals are on this record i think the performative nature of the songs lends to him you know digging a little deeper vocally and i think the songs are really good um maybe like not the same level of writing as you know a village green or, or arthur or something like that but I think they're really catchy. I think they're really fun. And I think the band especially is what does this record uh, for me. I think the band is on top of its game here. Uh, great guitar soloing on You Can't Stop the Music. Uh, Mick Avery's drumming on When the Work is Over is killer, super funky. Anytime the horns show up on this record, they take things to another level. I think the interplay between all of the members of the band is, is really great. And I, I can get people not, you know, really jiving with the uh, the presentation or, or being into the musical theater nature of it. But I think if you're able to get beyond that, I think it is maybe the peak of their playing as a band. I think the band is on fire on this record. And I just like it a lot. I think the production's good. I think it sounds really good. There's some silliness. I wouldn't deny that. Ducks on the Wall is maybe the peak of, you know, kick the Kinks uh, 70s bombast. Just ridiculous song with the... Donald Duck type quacking in the background, but it's a blast. I enjoy it a lot. And I am up to four and a half for soap opera. You might be the only person in the world with a four and a half for soap opera. I'd like to see. Clay, Clay has it at five. Who does? I think Clay does. Oh, um, Clay. Come on. Uh, Well, that's just crazy to me above village green that's just uh number three i got something else i think this again you know it's in the same vein as face to face but i think there's clear growth again 
mostly in Davies, you know, songwriting, his lyrical wit and style. And I think one other thing it has over Face to Face is Waterloo Sunset, which is just one of the best tracks of the 60s. Uh, completely gorgeous. The production, uh, it's not great. I wish the production on these albums was better because there's so many good songs. The playing is so good and it's all a little bit like muddled uh, to me, which sucks. But uh, David Watts and Death of a Clown are both fantastic songs. Uh, Dave Davies, three tracks on this album, Death of a Clown, which is co-written with Ray, uh, Love Me Till the Sun Shines, and Funny Face. I think they're all great. You get a little bit more of that, you know, guitar raunch in there, which is nice to see. Two Sisters, really well-written tale. Uh, you know, one tied down, unhappy, married with kids woman, and one libertine uh, woman. And by the end of the song, she's looking at her kids and realizing that She's the winner, not her living fancy free sister. Um, sort of a parable to Ray and Dave, who was a crazy wild party animal. Ray was sort of the introverted homebody. Um, and it's these little character sketches, these little vignettes. Um, I think are just perfect. The melodies are just really great throughout. Uh, the way Ray can take like a trivial activity like afternoon tea and turn it into such an effective little unique song is amazing. And I think that's his, his biggest talent right there. And, um, you know, Lazy Old Sun's got some cool psychedelia stuff. And then Waterloo Sunset, you know, ending ending the album on that. It's pretty perfect. It sucks that you have to, you know, wait to hear it because uh, it's so good. But uh, I like it ending, ending the album. It's a good sunset to the album so uh four and a half stars for something else my number three you guys may have forgotten i haven't mentioned this one yet or have it much higher than both of you i've got the debut the kinks i know i've been preaching that the strength of this band is davy's songwriting and character portraits and all that but is there a better rock hard rock band in the world in 1964 no they're pretty much inventing it right now. No one on earth is playing rock music the way the Kinks are on this album. It completely blows me away. And yeah, there's covers, but I mean, you're taking this song by Chuck Berry, Delilah, and making it your own and just rocking it and going wild, but playing, but still being technical about it and just giving off this allure of being like dangerous and possibly bad. And like, this is what like, the old fogies, the housewives and, you know, the husbands were worried about with rock and roll. They were like, this does not sound good to us. Like this is, this is too much. And they just rock on this album so much. It is like just one of the roots of all the rock and roll that we know today, especially hard rock. It's so badass. This is a badass album. If they had more originals, this would be a five-star album. I've got it at 4.5. And I think for 64, it sounds really friggin' good. Maybe, maybe the bass is a bit soft in the mix, but still, for 64, man, you can't get much better. There's some really nice, just cool, clever guitar work and, like, so mystifying. It's really slippery. Just can't go to sleep, pretty and poppy. But, like, they have this anger and attitude and vigor in their guitar and drumming, unlike anything else going on at the time. I like the version of Long Tall Shorty. It's quite bluesy. I Took My Baby Home is awesome. It's really fast. Like, no one's playing this fast either. Like, they're just rocking and thundering through these songs. You get that Southern Train harmonica, and the drumming is just on fire. And it's fun. This album is just like a party waiting to happen. So cool. You know, and the instrumentation's tight. It's not, like, that messy. The performances are just these tight little hard rock gems. It's great. And it's danceable. I know you hate that word, Jason, but you can just dance. In 64, man, you're dancing. It's hard. It's in your face. Then you get it's uh I'm a lover, not a fighter with that cool little acoustic intro. You really got me, it's just something else. There's some sexuality to it, like just that guitar part and everything. So cool. Has this wild behavior attached to it. Side one is damn near perfect. Love the harmonica and Cadillac. Bald headed woman is awesome. Revenge sounds like it has influenced so much stuff to me. I think the riff is straight up uh shut up and dance from Aerosmith. 
I feel like there's some who songs and stuff that kind of go back to this style. Like you kind of hear a lot of about how Entwistle and Moon kind of played the blues their way fast and kind of like rolling along. But the Kinks weren't really doing it that much different, to be completely honest. Um, I really dig. I've been driving on Bald Mountain. You get the more peaceful and lovely Stop Your Sobbing. Got Love If You Want is really cool, kind of sly and mysterious. So there's variety on it. And it is just one of the first bad ass hard rock albums. Simply put, no one's playing like them at this time. And I'm not just going in 2023 for Man of the People. I'm I'm taking the hard rock street cred. Taking it. This is all, everything you said is true. That's all true. But the songs stink. That's the problem. But that's the problem. Songs just a lot of covers and a lot of weak tracks written by like Shell Palmy. I mean the the songs on soap opera are a lot better. Okay, well listen, please. It's we have to have a totally different conversation with Jason. Why am I coming at you, brother? Me and you are. Me and you are. We're doing all right here. Jason, you got anything to say? I've got nothing to say. I already spoke my piece on that record. Uh. My number three is Muswell Hillbillies, which was a bit of a commercial flop after Lola the previous year. It failed to chart in the UK, only went to number 100 in the US. And I think it's a shame because it's an excellent album. Uh, It's based on Muswell Hill, where the Davies brothers grew up, and it focuses on the working class struggles there. I love the sound of the album. Lots of acoustic guitar, slide guitar, banjo. takes elements of American country music but uses them in a completely unique Kinksian way. I don't think it's really entirely fair to call this a country record because the songs aren't country. None of the songs on this record I don't think could be qualify as country songs. You got a song like 20th Century Man. Like, is there a song built around an acoustic guitar just strumming that is more hard rock than that? It's really cool the way they're able to use the acoustic instrumentation and still make these great rock and roll songs. Also love the horn the uh, horn arrangements on the record by Mike Cotton Sound on this record. The stuff they do on Acute Schizophrenia Paranoia Blues is great. Uh, their work on alcohol is great too. Holiday, Skin and Bone, Complicated Life, Have a Cup of Tea, all great songs. Kind of takes their signature sound and, and pulls in these new elements and creates this really interesting vibe that feels totally unique. I'm not sure there's another record that exists that has quite the same feeling as this one. It's distinctly British, but it's also probably their most American sounding album or close to it. And the combination of the two things, like taking those American sounds and still writing these very, very British songs, I think is super cool. Don't think I've ever really heard it done this way before. I think it works very well. Four and a half stars for Muswell Hillbillies. I don't understand where Jason's going with his top two since we just did 1972. I don't recall one of the albums he has left being on that list anywhere. So he must have had some kind of sea change. We'll find out soon enough. Uh, When we started this, I thought my number one was going to be just a total runaway domination. Nothing comes close. And it it got really close. Um, And I almost thought about flipping these, but I'm not going to. I got Lola. Versus Power Man and the Money Go Round is my number two, but it is five stars and it is really damn good. And I didn't know how good it was. And especially for 1970, I didn't realize how good it was because this album is just bumping its way into my top five for 1970, perhaps. We'll see. Um, I just love everything about the production on this album is so much better than even you know six months or however long it was from arthur to this is just mind-blowing the way they use like the heavy guitars on this album is great the concept works i think really well it doesn't weigh things down at all um you know the satire of the music industry really brings out like that venom that i really like in ray and they bring in some of like that American sounds for this. You know, you got some blues coming in here, the harmonica, the slide guitars, that honky tonk piano right off the bat with the contenders. 
It's got a really great distinctive electric guitar lead. Like it, it sounds kind of like a, you know, something off a Stones album. Uh, so, you know, they're mixing up the sound here, which I really like. Uh, you know, the Baroque stuff's pretty much gone. The only time you get like that vaudeville is on uh, the Money Go Round, which is like one minute and 42 seconds. And yet super catchy. I love that song. But uh, everything else is really powerful. You got the the great use of the resonator guitar. I don't I didn't even like Lola, like the song that much. Now I friggin love it. And I, I mean, it's one of those songs I don't even know if I'd listen to if it came on the radio. I'd probably be like, nah, well, I don't need to listen to Lola. In the in the flow of this album, it works so well. And using the resonator for those big like power chords is such a cool like just sound. It sounds so unique, so different, so amazing. You got the great Dave Davies tracks on here. Strangers is fantastic. I love his voice on that. Uh, you know, it's plaintive ballad, almost Americana. Um, Top of the Pops has some great organs, it's really catchy. Uh, got those like rapid fire breakdowns where the whole band's just like hammering that one note, that da 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 da, da which I love. I love when people do that. Uh, this time tomorrow is so good. That folksy, lovely piano, long way from home. Like, you know, Bob Dylan meets the band, meets the Rolling Stones. Just incredible. The uh, some great lyrics on there. Your wealth will never make you stronger. And uh, Rats is another great one. Just powerful rock from Dave Davies. Eight Man's great. Power Man's great. Got to be free is great. It's just so good. I. I listened to this one way more than any other album this week, this last couple of weeks. And it, it just surprised me how good it is, how good it sounds, the contributions from the whole band, the contributions from Dave Davies, the Americana running through it. Oh, it's, it's damn good. I'm, I want to make it number one now. It's, it's going to stay number two for now, but it has a real chance uh, at moving up to number one at some point for me. Lola is my number one. My number two is Village Green Preservation Society. I knew Lola was going to be my number one going in because I always thought Village Green was a little bit overrated, but I was wrong. It's five stars. Um, and maybe it's going through all of this. Like, I always thought it was, like, awesome, like, four or four and a half. But now I'm like, no, yeah, it's a masterpiece. And I think it might be because we did so much Brit pop last year in 2022 and especially like I really loved Blur like fell in love with Blur and all that and I kind of like you know this is kind of like a little bit of a breeding ground for uh like park life and stuff like that with that sort of approach so now I appreciate it every morning I've got nothing wrong with it the intro just has a wonderful pep in its step somehow like encompasses everything the album offers uh, do you remember Walter is great like this is just the height of his just like vignette character storytellings and just kind of like the loose idea that it's all you know it's about everyone in this you know society in this village there's a great oddball like sentimentality to all of it too um it's all it's almost like like a fairy tale or like a really good short story with a little bit of whimsicalness to it and just a little bit of oddities here and there um the drums are perfect on this album the guitar too everything serves its purpose really well Picture book is absolutely sensational with that guitar part. Great rock song in there done in a more polished way. Johnny Thunder is awesome. The magic and the sound is everything. You just feel like you're in like a modern storybook. It's so cool. There's a little bluesiness on the last of the steam power trains. Big Sky is absolutely sensational. Personifying the sky. Killer bass and guitar. Really freeing and has that lovely little soft spot in the middle. But And the drums, this is their best drum album. I think it's just really sophisticated drum work. Animal Farm is great. Nice straight ahead momentum. You never get too comfortable with the album and never gets boring. There's enough stuff to keep, you know, the linear line of the story and themes kind of in there, but everything is kind of mixed up in a way that it's just a really good tapestry. You never know what's coming next. Every song has something new to offer. And just like the all encompassing portrait of like characters and things and themes of the Village Green, getting it all together. Starstruck is really catchy. I love the vocal arrangements and everything. All My Friends Were There is really super charming and endearing. Almost made me tear up a little bit. I think it's great. Wicked Annabelle is seriously awesome. Such a cool, dark little guitar riff. And the vocals are ghoulish and very cool. 
Keith Moonish on drums here, bringing the fever. Uh, Groovy Island vibes on Monica. The album just has a little bit of everything, variety everywhere, and just that Davies mindset and point of view and narrative throughout. Five stars. Always liked it a lot. Can't believe I slept on loving it. It's great. But I am I am giving the nod to like Blur for kind of being the 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 key into this castle of amazing Brit Britishness. I love England. My number two is Everybody's in Showbiz from 1972. And I did not listen to it for 1972 week. It was not one of the 147 albums that I listened to for that project. I think I, I think I avoided it because it has the half live thing. And I was like, we are including live albums and I don't really want to deal with how to figure out how to score that. And then I, I didn't see one single person in our discord even mention listening to it, let alone say it was good or worthwhile or, or anything like that. So I just skipped it. I was, you know, focused on getting to other stuff first that people were talking about, making sure I hit all of that stuff. Just totally let this one float by. But the studio half of this is so good. Uh, you know, it's the beginning of the kind of campy musical theater era, which really seems to divide kink fans. But I think this is really, really strong. And I don't think it feels as different as people make it out to be. I mean, I can see where soap opera does and I can see where the pre preservations do. But I mean, they had already had this affinity for doing like, these conceptual works. I don't think it's like totally out of left field that they switched to, to this sort of style. They had already used the Mike Cotton sound on several records. Granted, they're more heavily utilized here, but you know, I, I don't think that this direction should be seen as like a, a total uh, left turn. I love Hot Potatoes. Great song. I think that could have fit pretty well on Muswell Hillbillies. Sitting in My Hotel is a great song, like you guys both said. Uh, you Don't Know My Name is great with the slide guitar and the little flute solo, which is really cool. Supersonic Rocket Ship is great. It reminds me a little bit of Lola. Uh, super catchy. Celluloid Heroes is one of Ray Davies, I think, best pieces of writing. I think it's excellent. I'm at four and a half on it. And... I don't, if I'm only counting the studio stuff, it would probably be like my number 14 of 72. Um, I like it a lot. But if I'm counting the uh, the live stuff as well, then it obviously drops a little bit from there. And I'm not sure it would make my top 25. But uh, yeah, the studio half is excellent. Damn. Well, I listened to it in 72 and I was not impressed. So I didn't mention it. <laughs> Man, it's a shame Joe didn't go with his instinct and flip his number one because we would have had a trifecta but not the trifecta everyone would have thought we would have, which would have been cool. That would have been. I got a rep for Village Green, though. I think, I think it's just the superior, superior piece of piece of art work. Um, you know, it's ex, and it is my number one. Village Green Preservation Society, five stars. Sorry, the Kinks are the Village Green Preservation Society, five stars. Nineteen sixty-eight. It was on my top five then. And it probably will remain there forever. You know, another step forward in the idea of a concept album. And on this one, you know, it's very nostalgic. Probably too nostalgic for like a 25-year-old or however old he was. But, you know, all about like the preservation of English society from approaching threats. Uh, all about people in a small town all about, you know, sort of preserving England in this, you know, past pastoral world without the hustle and bustle of a big city. Uh, you know, the characters are all about going back, you know, on the title track, uh, sort of a wistful look at a guy who left the village green and then he's coming back and he's seeing all the tourists and everything and it's not how he remembered it. And it's all, you know, and that runs through basically the whole album, that uh, concept. Uh, the mix and the production, a little bit better, but that's probably the only thing that's holding it back from like a perfect 10 for me is like, I wish it was a little cleaner. I wish the, the instruments were a little more separated. It's a little muddy sometimes. That's all right. That's fine. doesn't matter because the songs are just incredible. 
Um, the playing is incredible. I haven't mentioned the bass or the drums much, but and usually it's because the bass is so low in the mix that I can really hear it. But there's some really great stuff from Peter Quaif here. Quaif, is it Quaif? I don't know how to say it, Quaif. Um, and McAvery on drums. You got Nikki Hopkins again on keys, just doing some great stuff all over the place. Piano, the harpsichord, the mellotron. Um, the lyrics are really smart. The We Are the Village Green, uh, the, like the mutating boast, the you know, We Are the Donald Duck Preservation Consortium, like the way he changes out the words, uh, the raspberry jam or, or whatever it is, uh, you know, preserving virginity. And it's just, it's hilarious the way he runs through it all. I don't know if he's serious about it, but um, it's, it's just funny. The first time I heard any of these songs is actually in the movie Hot Fuzz, which is all about like this village that wants to remain perfect. So they murder all the people that sort of step out of line. So uh, hearing these songs, uh, just perfect for that sort of like, sort of weird and like, uh, not like devious, but I don't know, there, there's an undercurrent of like too much nostalgia here, a little darker maybe, I don't know. It's hard to tell if he was totally serious or not, but the songs are great anyway. Do you remember Walter's great picture book? Uh, Green Day stole that for warning. That dun 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 dun. Great little riff rising there. Uh, Johnny Thunder got a little blues. Um, Days is great. Um, I'm looking at the wrong track listing. Uh, last is Steam Powered Trains. Again, has a little harder edge guitar. Big Sky. I don't even mind the talking. I think it works really well. The theatricality of it all. Um, you know. And, you know, just the, the pastoral themes. The Sitting by the Riverside, Village Green, Village Green Preservation Society, Animal Farm. All about, you know, the olden days. That's really good. The only song on here that I think maybe they could just take off would be Phenomenal Cat. I don't think it's that phenomenal, really. Um, but everything else is great. Uh, the drumming on Wicked Annabella rules. Everything just rules. People take pictures of each other. Great. Really smart writing from Davies. So uh, it's pretty perfect. Maybe I could use like one Dave Davies rocker here more than uh, last the steam powered trains but I, I don't really have any other complaints all right my number one is lola versus power man and the money around part one starts off like uh, i think joe you know i have no problem with joe picking preservation society because like he said it's their best work of art and this to me is just their best rock album like i just enjoy this one a little bit more and i'm usually the one that'll go for the artsier stuff first but this one is just so damn badass and starts off with that cool bluesy twang of the contenders and joe said getting some rolling stones on here yeah i think he's almost doing like a mick jagger mick jagger imitating the blues impersonation of mick jagger and then the song just really heats up this this album's just hot i think the early 70s production really helps like the like joe said the step and just sonic quality is absolutely out of this world. It even sounds ahead of its time for like 1970, I would say, maybe a little bit. Um, and there's just like a bitterness and venom to this album that I think you get, especially in the easier stuff. Um, there's resentment and it comes off as like really honest. I love Strangers. It's a beautiful composition. The drums on Denmark Street are great. This is just their best version of them as a rock band outside of the debut, but with their own material. Uh, get back in line is fantastic. You know, get a little bit of that harpsichord style in there. Lola is phenomenal. Top of the Pops just missed my top 10 tomorrow, but I think it's one of the most underrated rock songs in their catalog. Truly great vocal performance. And it just has a 70s rock feel to it, like a, even ahead of its time for just like 70s rock and roll. Like we talk about like these great albums from T-Rex and Thin Lizzy and stuff like that. That would happen six, seven years later. But I think a lot of it can kind of go back to this kind of just good meat and potatoes biting rock and roll. Money Go Round is a really nice change up for the album. The playful and carnivalesque. Uh, it's really powerful album. Great rhythm section performance. 
all the way through. A Long Way Home is great, just terrific melodic construction. Rats bringing that good, gritty rock and roll guitar tone. Ape Man is cool. It kind of feels like Lola 2, which I think is nice just to kind of like wrap that around. And Power Man is awesome. Yeah, Five-star rock record. All of these albums that I knew before, elevated. Like, I always liked the debut a lot. Probably not a 4.5. Always liked Village Green. Now I think it's a masterpiece. Always liked Lola. Now I think it's a masterpiece. So this was a really good week for me and the kinks. All right. My number one is also Lola versus Power Man and the Money Go Round Part 1. They're turning their eyes a little bit away from the British life here and taking aim at the music industry. As a concept album, I think it definitely feels a, a little less focused and a little less coherent than the previous two records, but that's not really what's important here. I think you just get excellent songs from Ray, including a pair of commercially successful singles in Lola and Ape Man. You also get what has to undoubtedly be Dave Davies' greatest piece of songwriting, which is Strangers, which is an all-time favorite of mine. I think I had to have nominated it in 1970 as one of my songs of the year. If I didn't, that was an oversight, but I absolutely love that track. Um, there's a little more rock edge on this record, too, uh, than on the previous. The drums especially feel way more impactful than they have on any Kinks record to date. And I think John Gosling's organ adds a lot of extra weight to the tracks here. I think uh, his contribution here should not be discounted. They haven't really had a power chord rocker like Top of the Pops for a bit, or at least when they have, they've kind of felt like throwaways, but I think that's a really good rocker, kind of harkening back to their early days. This Time Tomorrow is an incredible track. Um, got some banjo on there, getting some of that country feel uh, that would be more apparent on Muswell, but it's got like this sadness to it. It's it's like almost happy and sad at the same time. It's just amazing. Um, a Long Way From Home is a great ballad. Rats rocks really hard. There's just a great balance of styles on this record, but they're all supported by really strong songwriting. You've got good rockers like Top of the Pops and Rats. You've got really good ballads like Strangers and A Long Way From Home. You've got poppier stuff like Lola and Ape Man. And you also get like some of the more theatrical story songs like Denmark Street and The Money Go Round. It's just got a little bit of it all, and it's all really good. Uh, just... I mean, I think if you've never heard the Kinks before, this is a good place to turn because you get a little bit of all the sides of them at a high level. And that's the key. I've got it at four and a half stars. No fives for the Kinks for me. So there you go. Any final thoughts, guys? This was a great week. Great week. Knew I liked them a lot. Probably love them now. I don't know if they'll make my top 100 artists list when we do that in 2025. But we'll see. They're only good. They're only stocks rising, big time, big time. Yeah, great band. I don't know where they'd fit in. Like if you took the the big four of the the Brit uh, bands of the sixties, they they might be in fourth place. But uh, you know, they're seminal bands. They're incredible bands. They invented rock and roll, basically. So, gotta give props to that and. I didn't have as many like five stars as I usually do for like bands like this, but a lot of, a lot of good, good records. I think I had 14, 13 deep, four stars and above. So yeah, not to take away from them as an albums band, they have a lot of great albums, but they might be an even better songs band because like a lot of their lousier albums still have some great songs on them. Yeah. That's the thing. A lot of times with these like large discographies, you get past the classic period and then the albums are total trash. And then e they have great, great songs on their worst records for sure. And, th and they've got a ton of really good non-album singles too from the early days. So a lot of good songs, probably more of a songs band for me, even though as Cram said, they do still have a lot of great albums. I have nine, four and above. So they're just missing those five stars for me. And none, none of the records for me are like loaded front to back, just undeniable but still very good. I enjoyed the week a lot. It was not hard to get through these records. So yeah, glad we did it. Finally uh, can tick off the kinks. So let us know what you think of our lists, what your lists are. Drop them down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, check the video description for all the links and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.